we have with us today Mr. George Inasu, Country Head and Managing Director, FNF India. Thank you very much, sir, for taking out the time to speak with us today. Thank you, Nehal, for having me here. Before we delve into the details, would you like to explain from a layman's perspective for our viewers as to what exactly is a global capability center? Global uh, capability centers or global in-house centers, GICs as they call it today, is a global operation for a parent organization that could be sitting anywhere in, in the world. It could be in the US, it could be in Europe. Um, and the global in-house center basically supports that parent organization with a host of different services. And so in a nutshell, it's basically their arms and legs in getting operational work done, technology work done from a, a place like India or Philippines uh, for the most part. All right. So you know, from what I understand, in certain cases, they can be the backbone of the right. content support. Correct. Right. What do you think, you know, as a fintech company, or the role that GCCs have played in the success of your organization? So FNF India came into, um, I mean, the setup in India came about in 2005. And we grew from 2005 through now, that is 18 years. And what we've seen is that while we first started off doing the most rudimentary of functions, I mean, and all the GCCs basically set up their operation thinking, okay, we'll do the most low hanging fruit. And so you do a lot of the data entry type functions, you do a lot of the, the call center type functions. And very quickly, you suddenly start to move up in the value chain, you know. So you go from doing the most basic stuff to saying, wait a minute, we start to have resources that understand the business now. So we don't want them just to do the basic stuff. They want you starting to do more of the higher end functions. So you within the industry that we are in, which is uh, insurance and title insurance, so it's a very niche in insurance. What we saw was that we started doing a lot of the, the base level, say, underwriting. And then as capability grew, we said, okay, well, that's not, I mean, just not the capability that we have. We have much more. And so you kept seeing iterations of that and us getting better and better what we did. So we went from doing the base level to higher level complex type underwriting functions. And in addition, suddenly you saw the other capability in the marketplace. So for example, technology. When um, FNF India came to India, it was not necessarily for technology as, as a first in the first place. It came up for the base level functions. But then very quickly they realized we were based in Bangalore. We suddenly realized that the uh, you had resources there that had the right type of skill set. And again, even within technology, you started off with the most basic of functions. You started off with a lot of the QA testing, a lot of the basic level uh, .NET report, I mean, uh, development type of work. But then very quickly, you start to realize, OK, you didn't have to stop there. And so GCCs across indus industry have gone through this journey of starting on the base level of an industry or of, uh, of a company and then subsequently getting to such a scale. So today, as a simple example, we are at about close to about 60% of every insurance policy that is underwritten is underwritten from India. So just like how you said that it is suddenly the, the backbone that allows, say, a Fidelity like or FNF India uh, or FNF uh, be able to continue to have a market share of 30% in the marketplace, you know, and that's not possible without this type of a backbone being there. And so across industry, we've seen that GCCs have played that part. Uh, the other advantage that you see with the GCC over, I mean, uh, say third parties and other uh, uh, providers is the fact that it's it's very closely aligned with the, the parent organization. So you they have cultural affinity. Knowledge-wise, you tend to find that you're willing to spend the time and effort to scale up these resources because you're not thinking a short-term kind of engagement. So most GCCs are much more aligned to the parent organization and, and hence the reason why I believe that we are very successful at what we do. You know, the journey over the last 18 years mm -hmm. from doing rudimentary work mm -hmm. to scaling up mm -hmm. like the way you have would have definitely, you know, encompassed a diverse customer base mm -hmm. that would have been spread across the globe. Cool. How do GCCs help you service this diverse customer base? Right. So one of the biggest advantages that you have, at least with India, is that we have a very young uh, population and and most of, uh, say, uh, our employees within the GCCs are 
in their 20s and 30s you know sure. so largely they are young they've learned technology they've grown up with technology um, uh, i mean if you look at the 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 ones who are under 20 i mean between say 25 and to 22 most of them have not even really used uh, say a, a typewriter they've never seen a typewriter uh, so they've all worked and lived and grew up with computers so what you see is that they are much more sharper faster when change in technology happens you you never see somebody calling a cab today because I mean, if you go to the diaspora, which is, say, an age group above 40, you still find people who will still call a cab. Whereas with the younger population, you typically don't find that. So what we've seen, at least with India, is that because of this young population, you can learn something very quickly. So even when it comes to the GCC market itself, we are learning new industries. We are learning, like title insurance that we are part of, is not something that India even has. So to provide that service to the parent organization, which is again limited to a few countries in the world, we have young, really sharp uh, individuals who have been able to absorb their knowledge about it and be able to be just as conversant in that industry as somebody who has spent 20, 30 years stateside. So, so that's one of the biggest advantages that I feel that we have in India. Um, the other advantages, of course, is the fact that India is probably one of the few places and of course uh, uh, maybe Philippines is another one where the concentration of GCCs is so many that you suddenly have resources that have worked with say Southeast Asia, Europe, Africa and the across US the across the globe in one single I mean company. The likelihood of you having that type of an experience in any other part of the world is, is next to zero. So suddenly you know cultural differences between say people in uh, say say a UK versus a US how you would approach a problem uh, when you're dealing with a UK customer versus a US customer I believe India and probably Philippines to some degree has that experience now and that's really helped GCCs succeed when you're dealing with this global uh, type of uh, say uh, customer base sure you know like you very rightly said, GCCs are playing a very strong part in the India growth story. And India's young population is one of the biggest factors that contributes to the same. Mm. Going ahead, you know, what do you think are some of the key opportunities and goals that could be envisaged to ensuring that more and more people are able to get employed through GCCs? So largely, um, what I believe is technology is taking the world by storm. I mean, everybody's heard of machine learning and AI and generative AI. Everybody's heard of uh, chat GPT these days. So, and and if you ask an audience of, of a young audience, most of them have actually experienced that. They've seen what its capabilities are and they're willing to accept that technology in as compared to somebody who says listen i will only do it my way and I'm, i don't want it to help me out and things of that nature so so i believe uh, one of the biggest advantages that we have is that uh, or rather for employees would be to basically be able to pick up technology because as a company itself it's almost like if the day that we decide to say that we've reached the top of the mountain and we're going to stay where we are is the day that you start to climb down you know so from our perspective, we look at it and say, you know, you have to stay current with technology for you to be employed. Because if you don't, somebody's going to eat your lunch. You know, so so in our world, I, I, I believe that in GCCs, if you want to get employed, stay current with technology is going to be one of the crucial factors. The second thing that I would say uh, that you probably need is to be able to learn languages. Because many times in GCCs, you're... You, you may have a GCC that is bringing in business from Korea that might require you to have an understanding of the culture, an understanding of the language in order to effectively communicate. So learning languages is another key factor that is there. And uh, largely beyond that, it is it is your your own internal chops that you have, who you are as a person and, and being able to understand uh, what the needs of that business is and be able to uh, learn and get trained up on those things. So, you know, what I take away from this is the technology mm -hmm. and being multilingual Correct. will go a long way Correct. in being successful in the GCC. 
to achieve any success or to climb any mountain as you said there would have been multiple roadblocks that have come mm-hmm. on the way mm-hmm. would you like to share up with us about some of the challenges that you have faced in setting up and managing gccs in the country right so usually the biggest challenge uh, setting up a gcc is to uh, one talent i mean it's important that we can bring in the right type of talent and so most gccs are located in places where they have access to the best talent so bangalore is one of those one of those places where you can get excellent talent and hence the reason um, language skills is another so naturally again part of talent itself the other aspect of uh, say challenges that you come across is just the regulatory framework and and what happens so i mean most of us know that there was a recent ruling that came out that said you can't import laptops into the country and something like that has far reaching impact to us as a gcc because i mean we work on computers and if suddenly computers are not available to the the specification that we need suddenly work will get disrupted Definitely. correct so to a large extent we have to stay very closely connected to the regulatory f- framework and be able to communicate back to the governments to tell them why it is important that we get say computers to come in or access to th- things like that but largely i would say talent is one key factor and and being able to manage the regulatory framework is the other one that is that i would consider are the the two main challenges of course there are a thousand other challenges that you come across um i mean whether it's networks i mean like because i mean our life blood uh is your networks i mean if your network is not there in many cases you're not able to connect to servers and the networks where uh, in, to your parent organization get to those systems that you have to operate on so hence i mean your uh, networks and security of those networks are paramount uh to us being successful and again those are challenges that we we pay a lot of attention to uh, uh these days i mean uh, cyber security is a big big buzzword i mean yes. today and and literally we we look at it and and say that okay there's not a possibility that we can stop them from coming in what we need to do is stop them from taking the data out so so things of that nature and of course a lot of focus and attention goes into making sure that we have the right type of controls put in place to prevent any data leakage especially from a gcc in india because th- the problem with gcc is also is that it's also built on trust because you're 10000 miles away and the day that you have a data breach suddenly i mean there's a different type of view that they would look at from a gcc uh, f- uh, from the parent organization standpoint so it's important that that we have the right type of controls and we're not cutting any corners especially when it comes to security and uh, and managing your our networks sure you know as you overcome the hurdles you spoke about in climbing those mountains of success one key thing that has happened is you know gccs have triumphed over third party providers especially when it comes to cost execution and speed right would you like to throw some light on how that's happened and also probably share a success story with us an example of how at fnf india you know you've managed to do this right so this is a a brilliant question because um many a times you you look at third party providers as almost like a your disruptor in the industry because they come in hungry to basically win the business from the parent organization they're willing to go lean and mean to get to it whereas a lot of times gccs are not set up for the short term they set up for the longer term so you spend a lot more time developing talent developing knowledge things which may not be quantifiable if you look at it on a quarterly basis or even on an annual basis it does take time so typically what we've seen is that as if a gcc is not sharp in how they execute and manage their business then very quickly you you have competitors that is coming in and taking that business away but now what we've been successful with is the fact that we've looked at that as as a, as a way to measure ourselves and we looked at what the say a third party provider would provide in terms of say the way that they would go to market to bring in talent the way that they would go and train and then what we've done is that in addition to that so we used all of what they did well took that in and then put in the gcc components which are needed as well which is having a long term view to w- w- how you bring in talent and train them up and so what we've seen is that if you mesh the two of them together you get the best of both worlds so simple example so we 
ran our GCC just like how every other GCC ran, which is a pure cost center model. And in a cost center model, for the most part, my job or our jobs were just to basically figure out how can I continue to increase my workforce because as my cost went up, I charged more to the parent organization and I continued to get more. And so about 10 years ago, uh, FNF India decided that that's not the model that we'll operate in because all of the third party providers were operating in a model where they were, it was based on outcome, based on a transaction. And we said, okay, we're going to switch to that. And I mean, I mean, looking back, it, it looks that we did the best move possible because that change made our managers, instead of being just people managers, they became business managers. They understood what industry, I mean, what the market was doing stateside or the, the, the say, if interest rates was going up, what it would do th to their volumes. They were reading it from a business standpoint and they were making adjustments to staffing, adjustments to costs, adjustments to how they would operate. And, and what that did was that you started to see that suddenly when business is booming, we are we have seen that coming and we've already gotten ahead of the curve, ramped up, prepared for it. So as it came in, we are more, we're better at executing on it. And the, like, and the same thing, when things start to slow down, they've already seen that happening ahead of time. They've stopped additional hiring and so adjusted costs appropriately. So today, 10 years later, we can proudly say that We've not gone back and revised our original pricing that we've given our parent organization from 10 years ago, even though inflation for many years have run in, say, in the late, say, 6 to 10 percent type of range in India. We've given out double digit increases to employees all these years, and yet we've been able to keep our cost to the parent organization at what we gave them 10 years ago. So, so that's a, a huge success story, but it's also a factor of us not reading and seeing what is the best of both worlds. We have strong training programs that are there. So our resources are probably the best in the industry. And so today, when third party providers that get into our industry, they usually come into Fidelity to basically hire us. But the, the thing is, we have our long term view for which we've addressed it. Sure. But at the same time, we've also identified resources and and run the business like how a third party would do so. I mean, essentially a best of both worlds kind of thing for us to execute faster, uh, better, in a more economical manner. It's really hearty to see, you know, how speed, costs, and every other possible challenge that could come in the way of any large organization, GCCs are taking care of the same, and the kind of value they're delivering to them. And as we progress towards 2030, and we see GC, cumulative GCC market in India to touch $110 billion, we hope to see a very bright future ahead for them. On that note, thank you very much, sir, for giving the time to speak with us. Well, thank you, Iti, for the time.